very warm welcome also from the um, German cruise industry. I was going to start with saying ladies and chairs and the few gentlemen that are here, but since the room is filling up, I don't know if this is because the other conference is rather boring that's running concurrently or because cruise industry is finally catching up and becoming top of mind in the ports around the world as well. Um, the um, cruise industry worldwide, please bear in mind that it just presents half a percent. Despite all the numbers that we have seen, all the growth perspectives and so forth, it's just half a percent of total global shipping. So yes, growth rates are rather impressive, but uh, please keep that in mind throughout. Um, but, and what still lies ahead um, for the uh, uh, German soccer team, to use an analogy that's quite common here, is something the cruise industry in Germany has already achieved. We are the European champions. We had about 1.8 million guests uh, last year, which is now number one uh, uh, cruise market in Europe and number two next to the USA worldwide. It's been a long journey. It wasn't always easy. But today, the port of Hamburg, for instance, without a doubt, is one of the top-ranking ports in Europe, not just in terms of calls and so forth, but also in terms of numbers of cruise companies and companies related to the cruise industry that are headquartered here. There is uh, CLIA Germany, which, by the way, also represent the Cruise Line International Association. There's Hapag Lloyd, there's TUI, there's Costa Cochere, there's Cunard, there's AIDA Cruises, of course, and um, since April also Carnival Maritime, uh, which is the world's first marine, central marine operations center here. So uh, getting back to one of the questions that was asked earlier, the economic impact of the cruise business is by far more than obviously just the um, fees and, and uh, um, the use that a port is receiving. So you always have to bear in mind the entire value chain that a cruise guest and cruise business brings to a city, to a location, to a port, uh, and not just the particular interest that everyone is uh, responsible for. So, so much for the introduction. To give you a um, better picture, um, from the industry where we stand today, I would like to take a quick look uh, back uh, at, the, at the beginnings here in Hamburg, which are quite similar to those uh, worldwide. Um, in the um, 1950s, there was some of the first calls. It was by our uh, sister company, Cunard. Queen Elizabeth uh, then started coming regularly throughout the 70s, but cruise uh, industry did not really become an independent business sector until the end of the 90s. Um, so from 1997 to 2000, there were about 20 to 30 stops here in the city uh, with around 25,000 passengers a year. And then it started continuously rising from 2005 onwards. So not only be uh, became cruising more and more top of mind in the uh, German travelers, or, or guests as we call them, not passengers, they're not units, they're not containers, they're people, they're guests. Um, but uh, also due to the modern infrastructure that was built in several ports uh, like here in Hamburg. Um, and only a few years ago, uh, admittedly, um, the notion of this being a sustainable business and uh, uh, that this is a rising business sector has finally been recognized here as well by the local government and by the stakeholders. But it has been recognized and it has been recognized very, very broadly by, uh, by now. My own company, Ada Cruises, uh, we had to do some exchanges and with very simple means in the beginning of the uh, 2000s. We improvised by using tents. Uh, starting in 2004, the first uh, terminal, dedicated terminal was built, then it was extended, then it could handle 4,000 guests. In 2011, another terminal was built. And uh, next week, actually, uh, June 9th, the third dedicated cruise terminal will be inaugurated here in the port of Hamburg. So thanks to the city of Hamburg for supporting this, thanks to the Port Authority, uh, uh, to um, uh, all stakeholders involved, to the authorities in general. Um, this is a common vision that we have developed. It's a common goal uh, that we have. Um, everyone has pretty much set the right course for success successfully continuing our common growth. 
However, thinking about the future, even already today, and um, since a few years back, actually, we said that um, three terminals may not be enough, that the facilities for the future need to be extended. Now, if you think about uh, the application of Hamburg for the 2024 Olympic Games. This would be a perfect opportunity to be able to reuse the facilities uh, that will be built, the infrastructure. So Hamburg will need a fourth terminal um, uh, in the future or a fourth facility in the future, uh, and it will be perfect um, in conjunction with uh, the Olympic Games. And I'm convinced that hosting the Games in 2024, or maybe even in 2028, will sustainably boost Hamburg's international status as a cruise location. And if you look back at Barcelona, what happened in 1992, uh, Barcelona has impressively shown that this is possible. So again, think about the big picture. J don't just think about your ports. Think about the value chain. Uh, and think about the economic impact that cruise business has for your uh, city or for your region. That was the outlook. Uh, where do we stand today? I don't, uh, I mean, those numbers you have uh, mostly seen uh, in um, um, uh, Douglas's presentation already. Um, just a few highlights uh, again from a German perspective. Um, there was 200, um, um, sorry, this, this is worldwide, 278 ocean cruise going ships and 133 uh, uh, river ships. Uh, again, only half a percent, half a percent of worldwide uh, uh, shipping. Um, the situation in Germany is uh, such that it's by far the fastest growing sector in tourism. Uh, tourism overall um, volumes, travelers, revenues are pretty much stable, but cruising is growing uh, by uh, double digits year over year. Um, as I said, in 2014, we have reached a, a, a record uh, result, um, and um, um, we are pretty certain that this will continue in the next um, uh, few years, um, that uh, we will reach uh, the 2 million mark within maybe this, but uh, definitely next year, and the 3 million mark in the next three to four years. So you can see the CAGR of uh, the past years uh, uh, was double digit, and, uh, double digit, and that's something really to be uh, proud of. So all leading in indicators, uh, um, besides um, just growth in, in numbers of guests, uh, are also up. Total revenue increased in Germany to 3.1 billion euro. Uh, the average ticket price, and that is really very good news, also increased to 1,530 euros per person, that is based on um, eight point something average um, um, uh, days, uh, average voyage duration. Uh, the daily rates rose uh, um, for international cruise lines, but, uh, and that is even better news for, for German cruise lines. The increase was even higher to 184 euros per person per day, which is a clear sign again that um, uh, dedicated German-speaking products are preferred by German travelers. Where do Germans most like to travel to? Um, of course, the Mediterranean, uh, with a share of about 30 percent, um, and uh, up and coming and even growing stronger than the Mediterranean in the past few years is Northern and Western Europe uh, and the Baltic Sea together account for 36 percent already. Uh, because it's much easier uh, uh, accessible to many. So 80% of Germans travel on cruise ships within Europe. A few more demographics. The average age was about 50, which is um, about 10 years uh, younger, Douglas, if I'm not mistaken, than uh, the worldwide average. Um, and we do enjoy a repeat ratio of over 50%, so very, very loyal guests. And all that uh, goes really nicely together with the demographic development uh, in Germany. And this chart also clearly shows that multi-generational holidays are the big trend in the moment and for the foreseeable future. But um, 
in our view, age is not a differentiating factor any, any longer. Um, uh, factors like consumer behavior, personal interests, psychographic factors are much, much more important, and th those are the ones we address in our advertising. In um, 2014, back to Hamburg, over 600 cruise ships stopped at uh, German ports, Hamburg ranked number one, with uh, close to 600,000 passenger uh, uh, movements uh, again. Um, so that is 588,000 guests in and out. Um, and 93% um, of the total traffic is uh, attributed to the top three ports, which is Hamburg, uh, Rostock, Warnemünde, and uh, uh, Kiel. So, Again, um, um, economic impact studies have shown, for instance, in the city of Hamburg, a third, and this was done by the Chamber of Commerce a couple of years ago, a third of all guests come here, go on a cruise, or come here a couple of days earlier, or stay a couple of days longer after a cruise, uh, spend on average longer time than a typical tourist in the city, and spend more money on hotel and other um, uh, uh, discretionary spending than a typical tourist. So it's a great opportunity for any city when a ship comes to showcase their, their town, to showcase their destination, but of course it only works if port and all um, the tourism-related businesses work hand in hand. We believe that our growth potential is far from exhausted, uh, and the market so far, um, as uh, Mr. Ward has also shown, has only grown as much as capacity that was added. Uh, by 2017, 25 more ocean-going ships will be put into service, and five of them dedicated to the German market. So Germany, the growth in Germany um, is already uh, preset and uh, uh, will continue for those uh, uh, years to come. Um, so, in closing, obviously, it's not just all about you know, growth and, and perspectives. Uh, we also do have some challenges. Um, cruising has become very affordable. It has arrived uh, in the middle of society. It has been... Uh, um, it's, it's, it's now reachable by a, by a very broad uh, audience. It has become the lifestyle choice. It has enormous variety, safety, and what is our biggest value proposition, uh, or, or our biggest hook, is by far the best uh, price-value ratio. And there's no other holiday that is, uh, and particularly no all-inclusive holiday, um, that uh, combines such convenience, safety, and eco-friendliness. And that's a, a point I'm, I really try to make in closing, because it's, that is also, of course, one of our uh, uh, challenges. Um, the, we advertise with pristine environments. That's part of our, our, of our product, that's part of our uh, value proposition, that's a selling point. So we think as a cruise industry, we have a special responsibility to keep the environment as pristine as possible. So improving the eco balance will uh, continue to be a central issue, not just in the ports, but any other, uh, any destination uh, uh, we go to. So conserving resources, sustainable business, and uh, consistent protection of the environment um, will ensure that we will also be able to successfully offer cruises in the future. It goes without saying that the best ton of fuel is the one we don't need. So in our view, um, uh, environmental protection and business interests are not a contradiction at all. Uh, for years, comp cruise companies and ship manufacturers have been making considerable investments in the development and the implementation of eco-technology, uh, uh, eco-friendly system and technology. Uh, here are just a few examples, modern filter technology, an um, LNG hybrid barge, which uh, supplied green energy to a cruise ship for the first time ever, for the first time ever last Saturday here in the port of Hamburg. Um, then, of course, uh, shore power and cold ironing. Um, um, sorry, I jumped a little bit ahead with my slides. Uh, a, tr a sewage treatment system, heat recovery systems, waste separation, and in the future also air, uh, air lubrication systems to further cut down on the use of energy. 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are, despite all that, we are uh, an industry that makes vacation dreams come true. And we live off exceeding guest expectations. This is our business, this is our primary goal, this is our main driver behind our work. And it only works in conjunction with all stakeholders if they work hand in hand uh, on all the issues uh, previously mentioned. So I don't see, personally, I don't see any obstacle that would prevent us from continuing our growth path with you, with the ports in the future. I thank you for your attention. Uh, enjoy the rest of your conference and the beautiful city of Hamburg. And I hope to see you on board of one of our, and especially you, <laughs> on board of our beautiful vessels soon in the future. Thank you. Thank